The segment on democratizing the Democratic National Committee is about changes that we can make to the DNC that makes it more responsive to the people. Uh, I'm, my background is I was a elected DNC member uh, and my term ended in 2016. I attended two conventions and um, uh, about a dozen DNC meetings. I was mystified by the lack of um, substantive actions that occurred during those meetings. Uh, they were mostly social gatherings and it really got me to thinking about what is this organization and what does it do? Uh, I started studying the bylaws because that is kind of the, the DNA of the organization and uh, discovered what was really the, the trigger gene inside the bylaws, which I think we can um, uh, tweak to make it a more effective organization uh, for the people. The problem of the DNC is that uh, Democrats, and by Democrats I mean civilians, do not control the party rules, the party platform, or the party funding strategy. These are controlled by committees comprised of appointees of the DNC chair who therefore lack independence to reflect the will of the electorate. Uh, and the great example of this was DWS, uh, who was the DNC chair for, I don't know, something like seven years. Uh, she single-handedly controlled the Democratic Party platform, the rules of the party, and the party funding strategy. Uh, if you remember towards the end when Bernie, the Bernie supporters were in the platform meetings before the convention and they were pulling the platform of the Democratic Party to the left, those are the kinds of discussions that, uh, that can go on. However, if you have a uh, a, an appointed majority that uh, is representing the establishment and want to oppose anything that they want, uh, they will do so, which is what I saw uh, when I was a member of the Rules Committee of the convention. The Bernie Sanders supporters were outnumbered two to one, and so everything that we proposed during the, the meeting of the Rules Committee were voted down, with the exception of the Unity Commission, uh, which was established at the end of the meeting uh, and made some of the changes to which what we see play out today. The committees need to be insulated from the undue outside influence and be accountable to the Democratic electorate. Um, so the standing committees of the DNC, as outlined in the bylaws, are the Credentials Committee, the Resolutions Committee, the Rules and Bylaws Committee, and the Budget and Finance Committee. Uh, just so you know what these do, the Credentials Committee is where you go when you find your credentials challenged. Uh, perhaps uh, delegates were uh, inappropriately elected from your state and you want to present a different delegation, you can go to the Credentials Committee and they will, they will, uh, they will manage that, uh, that uh, discussion and make a decision and decide who's seated. The Resolutions Committee does what, what resolutions committees do in all 50 states and in all the counties across the United States. They pass resolutions, which are statements of beliefs. Um, uh, we spend enormous amount of time crafting the wording of these. And so these are really the, the, the policy statements and belief system of the Democratic Party. Uh, uh, the Rules and Bylaws Committee are the ones that get together and craft the rules that govern the convention. Uh, they, they govern the, the selection of the delegates to go to the convention and the, the bylaws itself of the DNC. And then finally, you know, there's the Budget and Finance Committee. So people keep wanting to get corporate money out of the Democratic Party so it has less influence. This is the, the one place where you could uh, affect change in this is the Budget and Finance Committee. Uh, in the next slide, there is an additional committee, which uh, uh, wasn't obvious when I first read it, but after thinking about it, it, it seems odd that it's not there. There should be a nominating committee, and what they would do is they would be the level playing field for soliciting candidates and managing the elections of both officers and committee members. I don't know how this process is done now. There must be rules underlying this that, that I've not uh, seen, but we do know that um, candidates get nominated. We saw Tom Perez run against Mike Ellison and a number of other people after the 2016 election. Uh, that was managed somehow. Uh, what we need to do is is make this a nominating committee with a level of independence so that it's a level playing field for anyone who wants to run and run this in a democratic way. 
So what does the bylaws say about the staffing of these committees? Um, so the language in Article 2, Section 10G, it says, except as otherwise provided in the charter or in these bylaws, the members of all committees of the National Committee shall be appointed by the chairperson of the Democratic National Committee in consultation with the Executive Committee subject to the ratification by the Democratic National Committee and shall be appointed to serve for the tenure of the chairperson. So currently they 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 appoint all the members and they last as long as the chairperson does uh, and when the chairperson changes then the committees change although when debbie wasserman schultz resigned and donna brazil took interim chairmanship i don't believe this happened but it was in the middle of the convention and there probably no way it could have uh, effectively been done why is this problematic so the dnc chair selects the membership it's, it's subject to the ratification by the DNC membership. That, that part seems okay. Uh, but what this causes is for the committee members to be beholden to the DNC chair, not the electorate, because the chair can go in and replace them at, 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 at their will. Uh, also, there's no limit to the number of members on the committees, allowing the committees to be packed. So if uh, for some reason there were 10 members and uh, the chair wanted to do something and the committee was resistive. If the chair did not want to remove them, he could just appoint 30 more members and get a, uh, a super majority in there and, and do whatever they want. Uh, it really needs to be a set member, set size to the committee, so you know when the slots are filled. There's also no quorum published or uh, requirements for prior, prior notice of meetings. So uh, presumably that would default to a quorum of 50% 50, 50 plus one. Uh, and if there's no prior meeting notice, that would be problematic because if you call a meeting uh, and people have to fly in and arrive from across the United States, the meeting is in DC, uh, you know, it takes some time to arrange. And so you can imagine the kinds of things that could go on if they could call a meeting for the next day and only their, their, uh, their, their favored members of the committees can attend and they make decisions the, for everyone and pass them forward. Also, there's no qualifications for committee membership, so uh, people could just be placeholders and, and it'd be clearly understood that all they are are uh, rubber stamps. So the proposal that I'm pitching is that the standing committee members be elected rather than appointed. A nominations committee be created to ensure fair and equal treatment of all candidates. A term of office be set to four years, uh, but any of the members can be reelected. Uh, a fixed size be established to eliminate committee packing and then the rules established for the quorum and prior meeting notice. So uh, on the next slide, I have the proposed revision to the bylaws, uh, and we can certainly discuss this and how it should be implemented. Um, uh, and we can talk about that later in the show. But the proposal that I would like to start with is that except as otherwise provided in the charter, the members of the all committees of the National Democratic Committee shall be elected by the regional caucuses by majority vote subject to ratification by the Democratic National Committee. Each committee shall have 100 members. The number of members elected from each region will be proportional to the region's percentage of registered Democrats. The election of the committee delegates will occur at the DNC meeting following the presidential election and will serve until replaced or recalled. Uh, things that that I'm open, quite open for discussion uh, on are the number of members. It might sound like 100 members is a lot, but that's also the size of the Senate. And it seems to be a size where people can talk and, and negotiate and, and, uh, and uh, come to some reasonable conclusions. We are a big country with 50 states and um, uh, a number of uh, territories that, that get to participate. And so uh, 100 members seems like a, a reasonable starting spot. Uh, also, how they are elected needs to fit inside an existing structure, and the only breakdown I could find inside the bylaws were the regions. Uh, but if there's another logical way to do this, uh, we, you know, I would love to hear it and and talk it through. On the next slide, we need. Uh, I'm talking about the addition of the next of an, an additional committee, so a nominating committee. Uh, shall disseminate a call for the nominations that include needed professional and, and personal competencies for the current election cycle and provide reasonable period of time for the submissions of nominations. 
Uh, the nominating committee would prepare a slate of candidates for offices and committees at least 60 days prior to the election date. So I would give the nomination committee responsibility for both officer candidates and uh, to the, the standing committees. They should present a slate of nominees to the regional caucuses for the committees. Um, implement the policies and procedures for nominations and elections as established by the rules committee and as specified in these bylaws. So if the rules are not established and they're just working on customs at this point, I'd advocate turning them into standing rules so that uh, everyone understands what the, the, the rules of the game are. Um, and then assume other responsibilities for nominations as provided for in these bylaws. The next slide talks about the way the DNC uh, has carved the United States into four regions. So we have the Eastern region, which is Connecticut, Delaware, District of Columbia, um, you know, the Eastern seaboard. We have the Southern region, which is Alabama, Arkansas, Florida, Georgia, uh, up to the Virginias. Uh, we have the Midwestern, which is Illinois, Indiana, Iowa, Kansas, Michigan, Minnesota, Missouri, Nebraska, et cetera, through Wisconsin. And then we have the Western region, which is Alaska, Samoa, Arizona, California, Colorado, Guam, Hawaii, Idaho, uh, Northern Mariana Islands, Oregon, Utah, Washington, and Wyoming. So the, the Western part of the United States. What the changes will achieve, uh, we should see greater participation in the activities of the Democratic Party by Democrats. So instead of the quarterly meetings of the DNC be uh, social gatherings of the caucuses and various groups, they actually conduct meetings during the, the quarterly meeting. And then if we have independent committees that make decisions, uh, then they can do it on based on the best interests of the people, not of the chair. Um, so if these changes sound like something that you support, um, I would like for current delegates to the Democratic National Committee and potential delegates to the 2020 Democratic National Convention sign up at uh, this URL, advancementofdemocracy.org. Uh, there's a link uh, and uh, you can click on the link and join the committee and help me polish these, uh, these, uh, these bylaws proposals and then the strategize on how best to get them implemented and implemented. The next slide is what the website looks like. So the three squares at the bottom are actually buttons. Uh, if you wanna submit other ideas to change the bylaws, click the button on the left. If you want to see this slide deck, uh, click on the center one, which is the proposed bylaws changes. And then if you would like to join the committee, uh, and we would love to have members from all, this, all the states and regions of the United States, uh, click on the right button uh, that says endorse the bylaws changes, uh, complete the form with your contact information, and we will get your information. We will get you involved in the activities going forward and get these uh, proposed to the Democratic National Committee. So yeah, I, I, you know it's it's a it's a cumbersome process. It's a very big organization. Uh, this is this is a concept on the scale of what Google tries to do. But um, I think that if we have enough people interested in making these changes and we can find the right people in the right positions of the Democratic Party, we can push them forward. 